Good morning everybody, it's day four today and we have left Mplanga Rocks. Mplanga Rocks. And we are now at Howard Falls, which is a waterfall. And although the weather's lovely today, it's apparently it's been raining a lot in the last week, so the falls are at full capacity. So we are looking forward to going to see them now. This has been about an hour and a half drive north, I guess, or west uh, from uh, the sea. So come along with us and go and see what the falls are like. Hi, we're James and Rob, and this is our dog, Oscar. It's a really steep learning curve when you start your motorhome, campervan or caravan journey, and there is lots that we wish we had known. So we decided to document what we have learned and share with you our adventures as we head out on the road again. So we are just walking from the car park to the falls, and there are lots of lovely whatnot shops, as James would say. You can see signposts for all the different waterfalls around the world and how far they are, which is pretty cool. This talks about the origins of how the falls came about. All the lot they've got their own Loch Ness monster by the looks of things. The Inkanyamba. In and then some of the early history and then some facts. In 1984, after an argument, Polly Lanindo climbed over the railings, went after him and tried to assist and both fell over the edge, both survived. By me. So we are at the Nelson Mandela capture site, which is about a 10 minute drive from the waterfall and we are going to go and look at the sculpture park and learn a little bit more about where he was captured um, and so come along with us. He was arrested on the 5th of August 1962 outside Howick and he spent the next 27 years of his life in prison. It's amazing. extremely moving and educational and it teaches you how cruel human beings can be and how anybody can possibly think that it's right that we have apartheid and separate the whites from the blacks and that they have to live a much poorer in life yeah it's just it's just mind-boggling really isn't it so but if you do get a chance to come here i'd highly recommend it because it's really well done it's very moving but it's also really good to learn a bit of the history and the countries that sided with apartheid and then in the end the countries that put enough pressure on South Africa to make apartheid end and of course the ANC's work as well and then what Nelson Mandela went on to do after spending 27 years in captivity including many of those years on Robben Island where he was in solitary confinement and doing hard labour every day. So highly recommend this if you get a chance to come here. So we have stopped for lunch at a place called Tumble Downs, which was recommended on what's this road called? The Curry Post. Curry Curry's Post Road. Curry's Post Road. And 
I'm not sure you can get a more beautiful locational view for your lunch. So this is the view from where we we are seated for lunch and this is definitely the South Africa that we know and love. It is lovely and warm but not so hot as it was down in Durban because there's a bit of a breeze here so we'll go back to you when the food arrives. So our food has arrived and James has got a nice Roquefort salad, very healthy, and I've got a meze plate, which is not quite what I expected, but it looks very nice, like a beef curry, and some salad and some dippy things, but it looks very nice, so we should get on and enjoy eating it. After a lovely lunch and a chat with some of the staff who were fascinated by my video camera, we got back on the road and headed towards Kambathi Lodge, and you can see that the road is full of potholes, and only in South Africa would you see signs that say beware of the potholes for the next 20 kilometers. And we were in the cheapest rental car, so we had to be super careful because quite frankly, if you went fast into one of these potholes, you would completely wreck your tire in a four x four, let alone our little car. Anyway, eventually we turned left into the farm track that led us towards Kambathi. And you can see that this gets even more bumpy and hairy, which is kind of the what's gonna happen over the next few days of our driving. But anyway, we arrived at the beautiful Kambathi Lodge and we were greeted by some animals which was again a sign of things to come. This is a really nice greeting as we arrive at the This is our room in the Kambati Lodge and we've got a little dog. So you come in, we've got this lovely bathroom with some nice smelling salts and a big shower and a basin and there's James with a rather large bed and mirror and our own decking with our own little doggy. Hello. Hello. Shall I let him in? <laughs> Are you posing for the camera? Oh, look at you. You are so cute. Uh, and this is the view from our terrace. Where's the pen? Oh, that's a lizard. Is that a lizard? <laughs> it's a lizard. Where? Well, at least I hope it is. Why is there a snake? It's about 6 30 now, and we are having pre dinner, pre, pre -dinner drinks, just a small gin. And um, we are at Mbiti Hill, then we're not, we're at Kambati Lodge. Lodge. <laughs> Lodge again. And um, yeah, it's a nice evening. All the flies are there, so it may well get a bit chilly later on, but probably not for us Brits. Good morning everybody. We have driven about an hour and a half from our hotel at Kambati Lodge. We've driven down the Midlands, big meander, the R103, and we've stopped at Piggly Wiggly, and we're gonna have a look at the various shops here, which you can see. There's James. It is a glorious, glorious day today, and it is very warm, but there's a nice breeze. So, and you can see what stunning views there are. So let's go and see what we can find. There's coffee shops and farm stalls and wine cellars and a nugget place apparently so we'll see what we can find so we just had a coffee at the piggly wiggly and you can see it's in a big horseshoe shape with lots of different shops so and it's in such a beautiful setting that it is really worth um, paying a visit to so we're just going to have a look around all the shops and see what we can find
So after a lovely morning spent at the Piggly Wiggly mooching around all of the shops, we got back in the car and drove about four kilometers to the Lions River trading post, which was a cafe and a few sort of antique whatnot shops, but it was over this lovely river and again in an absolutely beautiful setting in this part of South Africa in the Drakensberg Mountains, it's hard to find any views that are not stunning just like this one. Hey everybody, we have driven, it wasn't actually that far, but it took forever up the trail to Highmore Nature Reserve. Nature Reserve. And we're gonna go on a bit of a hike to some caves, which is about a kilometre and a half. Our poor old car has really suffered in getting here because we've literally driven up a road that we had to go in first gear most of the way because it's so potholy and gravelly and muddy. But anyway, that's what happens when you get to the top of a mountain and we're gonna go on a hike. So we're headed in this direction. And it's baking hot again today. Even though you can see it's a bit cloudy. Um, hopefully it won't rain because driving down the mountain will be a bit hairy in the rain. But anyway, let's see where this takes us. Basically one and a half kilometers, it feels like we've walked more than that. But, um, parts of the trail are quite challenging because they are very overgrown. Clearly, there's not been a lot of tourists here over the last couple of years, so the trails have got overgrown. So at times it's quite hard to actually see the trail, but we just saw a sign to the cave, so we know we are in the right direction, which is good. Unfortunately the weather turned against us and it started to rain and we really didn't fancy driving our little car down the mountain in the pouring rain so we turned round, headed back to the car and headed down the mountain before the rains really came. So we arrived back at Kambathi Mountain Lodge for a lovely relaxing evening and our last supper before we packed up and headed the next day about two and a half hours towards Ladysmith to go to Nambiti Hills Private Game Reserve and if you tune in next week you'll be able to share our safari with us as we see elephants, giraffes, small zebras of course, lions, cheetahs and a whole lot more. So make sure you join us next Sunday as we head out on the road again.